What is going on guys? Welcome back. In this video today, we're going to learn about set operations in Python. So let us get right into it. All right, so we're going to talk about sets in Python today. And in particular, we're going to discuss set operations. Now, this video is going to be very foundational, basic and primarily targeted towards beginners. But this is a concept that is oftentimes not covered in basic tutorial series. So we like to talk about arithmetic operators and logical operators, sometimes even bitwise operators. We like to talk about lists and dictionaries, but rarely do we ever talk about sets and set operations in detail. And I didn't do it in my tutorial series, which is why I want to make this video again, as I said, primarily targeted towards beginners. So we're going to start with basic uh, definitions of a set or what a set is, and then we're going to look at the different set operations. So let us get started with the first thing. What is the difference between a list in Python like this one, two, three, four, five, and a set in Python. Now, syntactically, the difference is that we use curly brackets instead of square brackets. So I can do one, two, three, four, five here as well. And if I print them, my list and my set, you're going to see that the difference when I print them is also just the uh, bracket type. So we can have uh, square brackets and curly brackets here. Now, one thing that you can notice right away is what happens if I add an element to the list that is already part of the list. So one, two, three, four, five, and then one again, for example. And then what happens if I do the same thing in my set? Now, what you see here is that in my list, I have this additional element in the set, I don't have this additional element. And this is because sets are only um, interested in what is part of the set or not part of the set. We don't care how many times an element occurs in a set, we don't count the elements. We just know one is part of the element, uh, one is part of the set, sorry. We don't care about how many ones are in there because in a set we only have a single one because the one is part of the set and that's all we care about. Now, the other thing is that a set is not subscriptable. We cannot say, give me the element at position I. It doesn't work because there is no element at position I. I cannot say, give me the element at position zero. You will see set object is not subscriptable because in a set, we don't really have an order. The only thing that we care about in a set is that something is part of a set or not part of a set. That's all a set is. It contains elements. It contains an element, yes or no, not how many times, not uh, a certain number of times. We just know that something is part of a set or not part of a set. Nevertheless, we can still iterate over a set, but the order is not really predictable. Now, in this case, probably it's going to be one, two, three, four, five, but we cannot really guarantee that. It's not uh, deterministic every time. So if I say for element in my set, print element, this works, but we don't have a specific element at position one. Uh, or at position zero, one, two, three, and so on. However, of course, we can easily typecast a set into a list. So I can say, uh, give me the element of list typecasting my set and then give me position zero. And again, this is not predictable. In this case, it's one, but it doesn't have to be one. It can also be something else because the order here is not necessarily always predictable and deterministic. That's the basic idea of a set. Now, when we want to add or remove elements from a set, so add elements to a set or remove elements from a set, we can easily just use the functions add and remove. So we can have remove here, add, for example, let's go with eight, and then we can remove two, and then we can print my set. That's how you do that, basically. Now, what happens when you try to remove something that's not part of the set? So for example, let's remove the number nine, in this case, I will get an exception key error. However, there's also a function called um, discard, which does the same thing as remove. But if the element does not occur in the set, uh, if the set does not contain the element, we just do nothing. So we can basically just say, okay, nine is not there. So I'm not removing anything. Uh, and I'm continuing with the rest of my code. This is what the difference between discard and remove is. But these are not the set operations that we want to talk about. What we care about is the set operations between two sets. So let's say I have a set one and I have the values one, two, three in it. And then let's say I have a set two and I have the values three, four, five in it. So what kind of set operations do we have? Now, maybe for this, let's go and open my paint just so we have a sketch. Let's say this here is my set one. And let's say this here is my set 
2. Now, in this case, obviously, since I said it's 1, 2, 3, and 3, 4, 5, they have some common elements. So in here, you would have the element 3, because 3 is contained in both sets, and then you would have 1, 2 here, 4, 5 here, and that is the 3. Now, we can get different combinations of these two sets, so we can get a new set based on operations that we apply onto these two sets. And one of these is, for example, the union operation. A union is basically take absolutely everything. Now, this is not very good. A union is take everything that occurs in any of the two sets. It's the equivalent to a logical or operation. So the basic idea is that if I say print set one union set two, I get all the elements in set one and in set two. So I get one, two, three, four, five. Now, the same operation can be done with an operator, which is the and operator, or actually not, not true, uh, the or operator. So set one or set two, this pipe symbol here, results in the same operation as calling the union function. So set one, union set two is the same as set one or set two, logical or, or bitwise, or you could say set two. Um, that is the first operation. Another one is to say, I only want to have the elements that occur in both sets. So I want to have this uh, intersection here, which is what the operation is called. It's called the intersection or the intersect operation. And it's the equivalent to the logical and operation. So I can go and say, print set one intersection set two. And this is also the same as saying set one and set two. So in this case, you can see we just get three and three, because that is the only element that occurs in both sets. Um, another thing that we can have is we can have the difference of sets. So I want to have, for example, set one, but without anything that occurs in set two. So in this case, I would subtract from set one, I would subtract everything that's in set two. Now, obviously, for the four and five, we don't really do anything, but the three occurs in two. So the difference between set one and set two is one and two, because the three is part of set two. So we subtract it from set one. That's the basic idea. So if I say print set one, difference set two, then of course, I get one, two, and uh, actually, I'm printing. Let's do it like this. Uh, one, two, I get one, two as a result, because three is part of set two. Now you can as an exercise, think about what happens when I do set two different set one, obviously, I'm going to have four and five, because now what I'm doing is I'm taking four and five, I'm taking the whole set two, but I'm subtracting the three because it occurs in set one. So here the order matters. And again, this can be done uh, with an operator, I can say set one minus set two, or I can say set two minus set one. And this will have the same effect, as you can see. All right, so another thing that we have now, of course, this is basically this the equivalent to a subtraction. Now, this is not really a logical operation, but we can say this is subtract. Uh, another thing that we can do is we can get the so called symmetric difference. Now, what is a symmetric difference? It's basically for those of you who know what it is the x or operation, the logical x or operation, the exclusive or operation, meaning I want to have everything that's in set one, but not in set two, and I want to have everything that's in set two, but not in set one. So I'm interested in everything that is part of only one set, but not the other set. So it would be this. And it would be this. But it would not be the three, the three is part of both sets. So we exclude it, this is the so called symmetric difference. So let's just remove all of this here. Print set one, symmetric difference set two. And that is also the same the other way around. So set two symmetric difference set one would be the same thing. One, two, four, five, the three is excluded because it occurs in both sets. So it's the opposite, you could say of the intersection. Um, so the union minus the intersection is the symmetric difference, you can think about it that way. Um, all right, and this also can be done with an operator, the logical x or operator. So I can say set one, and then this 
um, exponentiation operator or logical XOR operator set to this does the exact same thing. Um, so these are the operations. Now for all of these operations, what we can do is we can also apply them as an update. So I can say set one, and then I can say, for example, symmetric difference, but I can call the, the function symmetric difference update uh, to actually not have to just print the result, I can actually apply the result. So if I say set one symmetric difference update set two, and I print set one, you can see that the changes are applied. Set one is now one, two, four, five. And this can also be done with an operator. This can be done by saying set one. And then um, in this case, this XOR operator equals set two. And then we get the same result. And this works for all of them. This works for um, and equals. This works for or equals. This works for uh, minus equals. The same thing works with all the functions as well. So set one uh, difference update and union update and so on. Actually for union doesn't seem to work. Okay. Uh, but you have these update functions here. Uh, probably because the update function, let's see what happens if I do set two. Probably that has the same effect as the union. Yeah. Um, all right, so these are the operations. Now we can also do other things. These are not necessarily now operations, but there are checks for certain relations. So we can say, for example, I want to know if set one and set two are disjoint. Now, in this case here, they're not disjoint because disjoint would mean uh, I have a set here and I have a set here and they have no intersection. That is disjoint. So it would mean disjoint means uh, set one and set two, the intersection is an empty set. Um, and this can be seen by saying set one uh, is disjoint set two. In this case, of course, we're going to get a false because they're not disjoint because they have a common element. But if I say this is one, two, three, and if I say this is four, five, six, then of course, I get true because they have no elements in common. And of course, also, if I go and say set one, intersection set two, you will see that I get an empty set because they have no intersection. That's the equivalent checking if this is an empty set is the same as checking if this is disjoint. Um, then we also have subsets and we ha also have supersets and we have proper subsets and proper supersets. So for example, if I have one, two, three, and then I have one, two, three, four, you will see that if I say set one is subset of set two, I get true because everything that that is in set one is also in set two. So graphically speaking, this would be I have set one. And then basically, I have around it set two. So here I would have one, two, three, and here I would have a four. So this outer thing is a superset of the inner thing. And the inner thing is the subset of the outer thing. So this is a subset. And this is a superset. So of course, when uh, set one is a subset of set two, set two is a superset of set one. So both of them are going to be true. Now, the interesting thing is that also if the two sets are equivalent, so if set one is set two, these two functions also return true because one, two, three is a subset of one, two, three. However, we can also check for um, a proper subset. And we don't do that here with uh, a function. So first of all, before we go to the uh, proper subset and proper superset, we can do the same check here by using operators again. So I can say set one is less than or equal to set two, this is the same as calling the is subset function. And here I can say set two is greater than or equal to set one, this is the same as asking for is superset. I'm gonna get true, 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 true. Now, if I want to see if set one is a proper subset of set two, I just have to remove the equal sign. And if I want to see if set two is a proper superset of set one, I just remove the equal sign here. And you can see I get false. But if I add a four here, I get true because of course, in this case, this is an actual a proper subset of set two. And this is also a proper superset of set one. So that's the idea. Now, why do you need that? Uh, it depends on your use case. I don't really want to now give you uh, all the, the, the use cases that you could need a set for. One thing that I have used in the past is that I used this in 
Uh, I think it's in the intelligent AI chatbot video, one of the most popular videos on my channel where I had a text. So a text like this, you know, a long text with a lot of words. And uh, what you can do is you want to get all the characters that occur in the text or all the symbols. So what you can do is you can say symbols equals set of text. And then you can print symbols. And you get all the characters that occur in this text. And uh, in this case, you can see it's only these. Uh, I can also add maybe something like a dot or a period. And then I have it in here, but I don't get any duplicates. And then maybe I have a second text. Now in the case of text, probably we're going to have the whole alphabet if the text is long enough. But then you can also see, okay, what kind of characters do not occur in both texts? What kind of characters are, um, you know, part of the symmetric difference and so on. This can be uh, interesting in some circumstances. But chances are at some point you will use sets and you will make uh, use of set operations. And now you know how to do that. So that's it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it and hope you learned something. If so, let me know by hitting the like button and leaving a comment in the comment section down below. And of course, don't forget to subscribe to this channel and hit the notification bell to not miss a single future video for free. Other than that, thank you much for watching. See you in the next video and bye.